John Twist of University Motors. And today I want to show you a, a little electrical, electrical job here on an RF95 nine-post control box. These are common to the TCs and the early TDs. Now these have a build date on the back of them. This is a relatively newer one. This is week number 34 of 1973. So, well, 1973 actually was some time ago, 41 years ago. Um, at least it's not as old as some of the ones that came on the cars originally, which would be dated 1949. Those are dated by, by a month, not by week. So we've got these fuse holders here on the side. We're gonna pop these fuses out. So what, what am I doing to, to this anyway? The, uh, the guts go bad. And we'll show those to you in a minute. These are original Lucas fuses. These are so cool. Say Lucas right on them. And they say 17 amps continuous. So that's a 17 amp fuse. It'll handle a surge of 35 amp just for a moment. And uh, we'll get the other fuses off off here. Now we'll try. Snap these out of the way so we don't end up in trouble with these guys. Then we're going to take the cover off. I'll show you this is a this is a control box. Most commonly it would be called a regulator. Um, and it says voltage regulator on the top, but it's made up out of the cutout. All cars have to have a cutout, and it's and here's the voltage regulator, and then these big windings on the outside here is an attempt at current regulation. But after a while, they burn out. The points burn out. The uh, the coils burn out. Something happens, and so we have to we have to renew the insides. So what we do, rather than repair this, is we get the new unbranded. Remember all those unbranded products from years ago? So we get the new unbranded control box. This is a five post control box. It doesn't even say Lucas on it. it comes packed with a little bag of silica gel to keep it, keep it uh, from getting too damp. But look, it's the same thing, right? So we're gonna take the guts out of this and put it into here. So here we go. So I've gathered some tools here, some pliers, and screwdrivers and so forth. Here comes the creepy part here. We're gonna we're gonna snip we're gonna snip our, our output uh, flange here at the top so that he stays part part of the base. We're gonna unsolder we're gonna unsolder the two bobbins in the uh, in the workshop manual, they're called shunts. They are uh, the windings that go on the inside of these of these uh, two bobbins. The smoke off this is going to make my videographer gag. So we'll get this guy heated up and. Well, these wires have been crimped pretty well. There we go. So th those wires are loose now. And now we can whoop, uh, disconnect our, uh, these are the connections between A and A1. Another little attempt at current regulation. I'm usually doing this on my bench without, without a cameraman in front of me, so I I will try to do it in this manner here. Come on. I know I can get this undone. And we'll get this loop undone here. They're, they're crimped and soldered. So I got that guy loose and I think, I think I've got the other guy loose here. 
This is our loop, as I said, between the, the terminals A and A1, so that when you have your lights on or something, I'm not too worried about him anyway, but I gotta get my big winding off the bottom here. You don't get to see my smiling face, you just get to see this, the tools and, come on baby, come on, there we go. Now it's separate, it's cooled. Now we go on the back side, take the screw that loosens the chassis of the guts. And presto, there's the old guts. So we're gonna remove the guts from this one in the same manner and solder them back onto here. So in this case, we're gonna, we're gonna clip our bridge here at the bottom, the connector at the bottom. We have to, not a very good solder job here anyway. I've just lost my fuses. I wanted to be so precious and particular about. So now we'll try to unsolder our windings down here. There's those windings. Let's get our main bobbin and the and the loop. Oh, questions how are we going to get a hold of this? Plus I'm working on a workbench which is much lower than my normal workbench. So my back is already starting to hurt. All my leave is at the house. I love those ads for a leave. Why take four pills when you can just take two? All right, here we go. Got that one out of the way. Soon I'll have this one. Take our, our screw that holds the chassis. To the bottom. And I've forgotten there's a nut down here. I gotta get a socket for him. This now is superfluous to our needs. This is our old, our old guts there. So let's, let's take these, take these guts here. I'm gonna feed the wires back down in here and we will then put our screw in the bottom. It's exciting. I know it's exciting. I, I can hear your heavy breathing through the TV lens here. All right, here we go. Pretty straight. So all we have to do now is get our our soldered connections back into the right places.
which is probably easier easier said than done. And I'll use my little acid acid brush here. Nice joint there, and Big, big connection, but it's there, it'll work. Now we bring our little bit of our wires down here. Always good to have a pen knife, unless of course you're going through the TSA point. These don't carry much current. I got this nice pair of pliers right here in front of me. I guess I should use them. Sure. Try that again. He's all set. And we just have our big strap here in the back. Remember we cut the one long and so that we can uh, join them back together. We'll put some flux on these. This is the strap that carries all the, all the current. And I'm gonna use a little pair of bird beak vice grips to hold these two together. A nice connection. Wait for the solder to change color and we know it's uh, set. We can release these. So that guy's all, all done back up. And here we have our box 
all set and ready to go back into service. Why do we take the fuses out? Because uh, it's nice, I was going to sandblast this, but it's nice to get down in here and clean, clean down in, inside. You can use um, a 22 rifle cleaning brush down in here, unless you live in Chicago or Washington DC where even cleaning brushes are probably illegal. But we can push these things in, get them crimped up a little more snugly. And we're all set to reinstall our fuses. I just have to find the other fuse that fell on the floor and we'll be all set. So that's how long it takes, that's real time. But it doesn't take very long at all. Does it work? Well, we won't know until we put it on the car, right? But I can assure you that it'll work. Oh, one comment, one more comment. Um, these new control boxes come and they say, clean the points before you use it. So let me find my piece of six, 600 paper. So here's a, here's a strip of paper. Let me just... Uh, So do scissors get sharper or duller cutting sandpaper? Alright, so we've got the cutout points here, so we'll we'll, we'll drag the drag the paper through here. And then are these points are normally closed. This is the, these points are normally open. We'll push that open and drag it through there a couple of times. They tell you usually in the box. I think even uh, Moss has two different types of control boxes. And the more expensive one, you don't have to clean the points. But it, it never hurts to clean the points. So. I thought I was all done, but now, now I am, except for finding that other fuse. Here we go. We're all set to go again. Now, why did we do this? Maybe we should have talked about that first. Because the car goes dead, because the, re the ignition light maybe stays on. Maybe you, you start the car up and let it idle at 2,000 RPM, turn the headlights on, pull one of the posts off the battery, and the car kills. That means the generator's not making enough electricity to power the headlights and keep the car running. So either the generator is bad, or the control box is bad, or the wiring is bad, or some combination thereof. So in the case of this, since this control box is no longer available, that's why we put the new guts into it. So that's my little treat for today. And I encourage everyone to come to our summer party. It, today is, today is what? Wednesday, July 30th. 2014 and our MG summer party reunion is two weeks away featuring the post Abingdon MGs come one come all have a good time take a look at our website all the information is there till then safety fast